happy Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. Um, I was off for Columbus Day and for my son's birthday, so I'm all thrown off this week. But <laughs> welcome, everybody. Thanks, Michaels, for having us. Um, I haven't done a class in a couple weeks. I feel like I haven't seen everybody. Um, so we are going to be doing pouring. So we love pouring. We hope you guys all love pouring and aren't sick of it. It's amazing. We're going to do a beautiful fall palette um, and show you guys um, how to make this beautiful set here on the wood slice. We've got some paint skins to show you. And again, ask Emma any questions or comments that you have. And we can, I've got a lot of supplies here. If we want to see something, if I have it, I'm always happy to do it or answer your question. Um, definitely you can watch this video and all of our other videos on michaels.com on their community classroom page after the fact. So that's great also if you're just watching to get inspired and you want to craft along later, definitely check that out. Michaels has an amazing library um, of this class and a ton of other classes. So lots of things to do and keep you busy and safe indoors and crafting. Um, all the product that we're using is available on michaels.com and in store. So you can order online, you can do um, curbside pickup, some places still have delivery, you can get it shipped right to your home, again, if you don't have supplies with you. Um, I'm going to give you a couple options and alternatives in case you aren't able to get the product. There's a lot of fun things that you can still do with pouring. Um, so we've got three different formulas that you can use to get the same effect. And um, Emma, what else? Just if you guys have questions, um, definitely let us know and we'll, um, I'm going to get started. So great. Um, yeah. Okay, so I got lots of stuff on the table. So a couple things for pouring. I'm just going to go over the basics. If you guys are avid pourers or you've seen classes, I just want to make sure if you're brand new, um, things that we always like to use, and these are kind of beat up. So we, you definitely want to cover your workspace because it's messy. Um, you can wear gloves. Um, I typically don't wear gloves. Um, the great thing about all of our products is that they are non-toxic and they wash up with soap and water. So easily you can wash your hands, um, but you definitely want to protect your work surface or you know, your clothing because it will stain. Um, so other than covering my work surface, I always use these disposable pans and you can pick these up. You know, Michaels, I know they have some um, different types of pans and trays. Silicone mats work great, parchment paper, but I just like these really inexpensive metal pans. These are great to have on hand and you can use them over and over again. Um, you're going to need some type of plastic cup. So whether it's the cocktail size or like the larger eight ounce, but you want to have plastic cups. Also some type of plastic spoon or popsicle sticks um, to stir if you are using the pouring medium. So these are great to have. And also thumbtacks. So this will, um, I just have these here. We're not gonna be using these a ton today, but these are great to have if you're pouring on a canvas or a flat surface and you wanna have it up off of your base that you're pouring on because then the paint runs underneath and it allows air to get underneath drying. So even when you're pouring your pumpkin, it's kind of great to elevate it because then you're not worried about um, it staying wet. So it's funny, Jesse just poured some pumpkins last week and I just picked them up here in the studio and the bottom's still wet. So you definitely want to elevate that and make sure that you're getting airflow underneath so it dries. So these thumbtacks are great. You can just pop them in anything and let them dry. So I'm um, gonna need those. So those are like my basic pouring supplies. Also baby wipes, um, again, easily cleans up with soap and water, but I always have baby wipes. It just makes it super simple. Um, I'm gonna be using stencil tape also, whoop, stencil tape for, um, to tape off the wood slice. We're gonna be using some Mod Podge um, scissors. So again, just a lot of different supplies, but again, I'll walk you through all of them. So um, I'm going to get started on the wood round. So I'm going to use um, this large pan here, again, just a baking pan. And what we did is what we're going to be showing you is we're going to show you these wood slices, um, again, at Michael's, beautiful, unfinished wood. And then all we did was we taped it off and then we poured directly onto the wood and then removed the tape to allow the wood to show. This raw wood is such a big trend. Um, it's so popular in all the decor right now, so I love this look. And I also love how you can really personalize and take your decor, so this beautiful fall palette. Again, you could make it more Halloween, you could do um, to match anything that you have in your home. So I love this 
great for a centerpiece, especially our entryway. You could set, um, you know, votives, candles, anything. We've just, you know, used our multi-surface paint um, and take these off. So you could do a whole set of these, do the wood round, and just really decorate this beautiful, especially for a centerpiece this time of year. We've also done it on these just simple um, glass containers here. And these are paint skin. So I'm going to show you guys how to do these with your leftover paint when we're done. So again, a great tip to do. Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can achieve um, uh, pouring paint and something to pour with, but it's really important to have a pouring medium or a premix pouring paint because if you just use regular paint, it's going to all mix together and get muddy. No matter, even when you pour it out, once it dries, it's all going to blend together. So you really want to make sure that that pouring medium that you're using it because it's going to let your colors blend and kind of swirl, but not completely mix together. So that's important. So we've got a couple different products at Michael's. We've got our folk art pouring medium. So this is amazing because you can mix it with any of our acrylic paints. You can use it with specialties. So whether it's treasure gold or any of our metallics, use it with any of our folk arts, our enamels, our multi-surface. So you can personalize any type of color pour that you want to make. So this is great. We also carry pre-mixed pouring paint. So this, we've already done the work and it's already mixed in the jar for you. So this, you literally just pour it out of the bottle um, you can pour it directly on your surface and do a swirl and do a direct pour, or you can do a dirty pour, which is when you mix all your paint in a cup and then pour it on your surface. But this is a great, it's already mixed. It comes in a variety of color, colors. There's metallics, there's just some great pour colors. And it also works, um, you can use it in um, tandem with the pouring medium. So say you have your basic pouring medium, uh, premix paint, then you could go ahead and personalize your pouring medium colors and use them all together um, on the same project. So also you can use um, is this Mod Podge Ultra. So we've done um, quite a few classes with the Mod Podge Ultra and this is a new product. Um, it is a Mod Podge in a spray bottle. So it is a glue sealer all in one. It sprays out a fine mist. It's just a pump spray. It is um, all in one glue and sealer. It's non tacky, self leveling, no brush strokes, but you can actually use this as a pouring medium. So if you're unable to find the pouring medium at your store, or if you have the Mod Podge Ultra, so it definitely needs to be the Ultra, not the regular Mod Podge formula. Um, this works great also as a pouring medium as an alternative if you can't get the Fogart pouring medium. So Emma, any questions? Not so far, Kira. I think we're all really excited to see you pour that really awesome pour. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take my plastic cups and I'm going to mix these colors. So we've got um, caramel, a drift, um, burnt ummer, and treasure gold copper that we're using. So I love this palette. I love the blue, love the gold. Okay, and treasure gold, you know, again, this is something we talk about all the time. It is the most metallic paint there is. So you definitely want to get your hands on this. And it comes in a beautiful variety of traditional metallics and then also jewel tones. And it's non-toxic, which is the best part. Non-toxic, great. Because most metallic paints, not most, but a lot of the metallic paints that are truly metallic and have the reflection that this paint has, and you can see right here on the pumpkin, look at that, just, these are just studio lights. I'm really bad at the mirror image thing right there. Um, it is non-toxic, not smelly. You don't need to worry about that. It is, it's such an amazing product. Okay, so I've got pouring medium here. So you wanna do a one-to-one -one ratio when you're doing your paint and your pouring medium. So I am going to fill this up. And again, just a one-to-one -one ratio. And you can pour your paint in first or your medium, it doesn't matter. Whatever is easier for you to measure out. Um, and then I am going to pour in my paint. And I'm kind of eyeballing this. Sometimes it's actually, typically I do put in the paint first, but I was talking to you guys and I'm paying attention. But I'll show you. Um, it's easy to adjust also if it's too thick or thin. So I'm going to do a cup for each color. So I'm going to have to make some more up here. Just give me a second. Kara, do you need to shake the paint bottle first with either the pouring medium or the paint? No, so I gave the pouring medium just a little shake and don't worry if it has bubbles in it. So you can just give it a quick little shake or stir. Um, the paint, no need to, it's really thick. Okay, so I'll show you. Of the copper here. So one to one ratio. Okay. 
and then I'm just gonna pour this right on top. So that was probably a better way to show it. I'm getting rusty. I'm not, I haven't done this in a couple <laughs> weeks. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm just gonna take my um, popsicle sticks and I am gonna stir. And so it's gonna come out of the bottle really creamy, but you just wanna stir it and make sure that it's all completely dissolved. And you can see that it's not gonna change the color or the sheen. And so you want it to run off of your spoon or your popsicle stick, like a, kind of like a syrup. So you want it to be syrupy. Um, so if it's too thick, add more medium. If it's too thin, add more paint. So you can see how that just runs right off. So Kira, someone has a good question. If you run out of a certain color, can you make a new batch of that color in the same cup? Absolutely, because it's not gonna change the color so you can match it. So unless it's a color that you're, you know, it's a custom color, anytime you mix this color with a pouring medium, it's always gonna be the same. Awesome. That's a great question, yep. And you just wanna make sure there's no lumps. Don't worry about the bubbles. Those are gonna go away when you pour. And one last question, Kira. If you were to use the Mod Podge Ultra instead of the Folk Art Pouring Medium, would it be the same process of mixing or is it different? Yes, absolutely the same. One to one ratio. But you definitely want to use the Mod Podge Ultra, not just a regular Mod Podge formula. I so love the palette too, Kira. It's not like those traditional fall colors. It's a little bit more modern. Yeah, I love the pop of blue. So I'm just going to keep stirring and it goes pretty quick. But again, it comes out milky and then you just keep stirring. And again, the folk art paint is so thick. This is getting really dark. I need a little more paint in here. So you guys can see how thick this paint is. I can't even get it out of the bottle right now. There we go. I know, sometimes you need to throw that lid out the window to get every last drop of Store it upside down. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of times before, yeah, we start filming, we'll turn the bottle upside down. Mm -hmm. I just wanna stir this really well and make sure we have a really nice, pretty dark brown color. Okay. And some colors are a little thicker and they'll stir a little bit better. So you just gotta be patient, make sure it stirs right. Okay, so, and again, with the Mod Podge Ultra, you would do the same, I can show you guys. So you would just take, um, here I have a beautiful, here's like a fairy wine color. So same process. And you could use um, matte or gloss, depending the finish you want. Now I would just take the pump off. And I would pour that right in there. And again, one to one, mix it and see how you, um, you know, see the consistency. Emma, does somebody have a question about Mod Podge Ultra? I can kind of yeah. see some of the comments now. Yeah, so someone wants to know, just uh, can you explain again what the Mod Podge Ultra would be used for in pouring? Absolutely, so for pouring, you would use it in replace of a pouring medium. So if you're not able to get um, Folk Art Pouring Medium or the pre-mix pouring paint, you can use the Mod Podge Ultra as a pouring medium. So um, it, you will get the same look and feel as using the pouring medium, but it's gotta be the ultra. But then the ultra is so good for so many other projects. You know, like you can use it for um, traditional decoupaging, it's indoor, outdoor, it's self-leveling, there's no brush strokes. It's great for mosaics. So it's got a ton of uses. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna use, I've got a big round here. The one we kind of did is the example smaller, but I got a big guy. So this is just an unfinished piece of wood. We're not treating it or doing anything to it. I am gonna stick my thumbtacks in it. So it stays off of the surface and it dries. Stick those in there and then I'm gonna take my stencil tape. So good and sturdy, that's what's great about these tacks. I'm gonna take my stencil tape or a low tack tape and I am going to tape off and you can do any pattern you want. You could do stripes, you could do half and half. You could pour the whole thing if you wanted. I just love the look of the natural wood. 
So I'm going to tape off just a corner of this. I like it to be asymmetrical. I'm actually going to double up this tape if your tape is thinner. And so we're going to be pouring on this larger area here. I'm going to tape here just to give me some more protection in case my pour runs over. I'm going to tape all of this off to protect it because wherever the tape is, the paint is not going to go onto the wood. It's a great tip. Yep. And you just want to kind of overlay your tape. If you can see, like, you don't want to just go next to it. You really want to, like, let it overlap. Overlap, not overlay. So I'm going to cover this. And go right over the bark. It's not going to hurt it. Just press it down and smooth it. And again, just with pouring, because you're going to be kind of swirling it around, I want to have some extra protection if wherever you don't want the paint. So Kira, what kind of tape are you using? So I'm just using a stencil tape. So it's just a low tack or a painter's tape. And this is folk art. Um, so any tape like that would work. And again, Michael's has it. And so Penny wants to know if you have any cool tips and tricks uh, to prevent paint from running under your stencil tape. Um, so you just want to make sure it's really smooth and flatten it out with your fingers. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, really like if it's like a lumpy or bumpy surface like this bark, you know, just take your fingers and really rub it down and smooth it because it's not going to damage your surface underneath. But I would definitely use, um, I wouldn't use like a scotch tape or like a clear packing tape. Um, I would definitely use a stencil or low tack painter's tape that's made for this. Right. Would not use duct tape. All right. So we are all taped off and protected. So then all you're going to do is you're going to start to pour and this is where we're going to pour. You can see this wood here and again I just have it on my metal pan and this is the effect we're going to get. All right. So I'm going to start with this brown. And you're just going to keep layering and depending how much, you know, if you want it to be very metallic, more copper, if you really like the blue, add more blue. So you can kind of really personalize it. I love this blue for fall. I'm going to go right over the tape. That's why we taped it down. So Kira, did you treat the wood with anything or is this just regular raw wood? It's not treated. Raw wood. Um, the surface is from Michael's. So just raw wood. It comes on in all different shapes. Um, they've got little round ones. So you could even do like a matching set of coasters. And the great thing about Mod Podge Ultra is that you can use it as a sealer. So once this completely dries, if you just hit this project with the Mod Podge Ultra, it's going to make it so you can truly use it as a coaster. and It's not going to be tacky. So you could literally put your cup on there and use it. So I love that as a matching set. Definitely. Okay, so I've got a lot of paint on there. So now I'm just going to start tilting it, really letting it move. And the great thing, if you're like, oh, I really want some more copper, you can just add right to this. And you can see the movement. So that's what's so important about the pouring medium, because if this was regular paint, you would not get the movement and it would just get muddy and all turn like a yucky brown. So you really want to see that movement. Okay, so there you go. Then what you want to do is you want to remove your stencil tape. Oh, it works. Okay. Yep. So you just want to peel this back and you don't want to let it dry because it will then stick to your surface. That paint will create a seal. You want to always remove your tape when it's wet. So okay. you guys can see, I mean, that's a pretty crisp line on there. And you can wait and let this part, you know, if you don't want to move it around and have it shift, I'd probably like let this dry just as is. I would move the whole tray get pretty messy here and then just let that dry because that's not going to move that's going to stay that line just like it did here 
and it's going to be really crisp and clean. So again, you could do a whole set of these. You could stack them and make them a tier. You could hang them. So lots of great options. I just love the contrast of the wood and the fall colors. And again, for centerpieces, put some, you know, greenery on this would be beautiful. So pretty. I'm going to let him dry. I'm over here. Okay. So the great thing about using these disposable pans is once you let that dry, you take your, um, you know, whatever you pour out, you have all this leftover paint, right? Paint's hard to get right now, and we want to not be wasteful, and we want to use everything up and be creative. So this is what you're going to get, is you're going to get a paint skin, and it literally will pull. So this was in the tray, done, let it dry, like 24 hours. You can literally pull this up of your, off your silicone mat or your pan, and you get a paint skin. So you're creating like a piece of paper. So you can run this through any of your electronic cutting machines. You can cut it with an X-Acto knife, with scissors, with stencils. And you get a sheet of this beautiful marble pattern that matches your project that you just poured. So you could do a whole coordinating set, which I love this look. So once you have that, all we did was we have a really simple leaf pattern. Again, you can use a stencil, print something off the internet. And I'm just going to cut this out. And this is just regular paper. But again, stencils work great. If you want to use, you know, your Cricut or one of your cutting machines, you can also use that. Um, just make sure that it's really dry before you cut it because you don't want it to gum up anything. I love the idea of being able to personalize literally anything with paint skins yeah. here. Yeah, so you could even write fall. You could write hello. Um, you know, initials. I just love the leaves. So all you need to do is cut this out. This would even make really great gifts, like to give little monograms to people with their... Absolutely. Even if you just fill this, like, again, with a candle as a gift or some candy, again, centerpiece, a gift, this is a great thing to do. Okay. And then all you need to do is you can trace it right on to your paint skin. Um, so you could trace it with a pen or pencil, or you could just kind of freehand it here. And see how like this literally cuts. It's so simple to cut and you get really crisp, sharp, clean edges. So I'm going to cut this. Again, any shape you wanted. And you know, we're using the leftover paint once we did a pour, like this literally came from pouring this wood. Um, but you could, if there was a specific, you know, if you wanted to do a bunch of these or you wanted a specific pour, you could pour right over your, right onto your mat or your pan, let it dry, and then just cut it out. So you don't even need to pour on something unless, you know, you were already doing it and this is your leftovers. But this could literally be the project, which is so great. Right, so again, you could trace this, you could use a stencil, especially if you're doing letters kind of using this as a guide here to trim it. It cuts so simple. Exacto knife, scissors, great for kids. Like this is an amazing fun project for them. They can do all the pouring, let them make the mess and then give them this and let them, you know, decorate, you know, anything. So then you just have a leaf so you can see how beautiful. And then all you need to do, which which is so great, it almost like creates, oh my God, paint everywhere. Almost creates like a cling. Uh, but right onto your surface, especially if it's glass or like a mason jar, but it peels right up. So it's repositionable. So you could even switch these out for your season. So again, just a beautiful way to decorate. And okay. then if you want to truly seal it, all you would need to do is hit it with Mod Podge. So you could use dishwasher safe Mod Podge if you were doing, you know, glass, you could use matte gloss, you know, typically glass, I would use a gloss. And then you could also use your um, Mod Podge Ultra, which again, sealer all in one. It's great, especially for round surfaces. You're not gonna get any brush strokes and it's not gonna dull down your metallic. So all you would do is I would actually, you know, spray the back a little bit. Even though it sticks, I would spray the back. Just make sure it's, you know, if you want it on there permanently. Um, spray him. And it's going to dry completely clear, so it's going to come out milky, so don't worry. And then you can just spray it and let it dry. And then, you know, like I said, all we did was we taped off, this is just treasure gold, 
So these are just some great, you know, glass hurricanes or vases, or you could do mason jars. Tape these off with a stencil tape, painted them with the treasure gold, let it dry. And then again, all you need to do is cut your leaves or your pattern. And you could do the same thing as pop these right on there. So I love that look, whether you want to go over the paint or, you know, I like it kind of like breaking the, the surface there like that. So Karen, you get a beautiful centerpiece. Sorry. If you wanted to seal with Mod Podge Ultra, how many coats would you need? You just need one. One good one. Awesome. That's it. And again, it's just a super simple spray. You could spray that on and let it dry. And I would use the gloss for this. Um, and it's going to seal. You could use dishwasher safe. You could use, you know, any of the glosses are great to use. I just love the Ultra. It's so easy and simple. And again, if you're using it as the pouring medium, you could just go ahead and finish your project. Again, if you're pouring some small coasters, um, this is great because, you know, it'll be a little bit tacky, just the nature of the paint. But if you seal it with this Mod Podge Ultra, then you could truly use it as a coaster. And you can see how easy that is. It's going to self-level. You're not going to get brush strokes. So it's still going to be that beautiful pouring pattern. And just let that dry. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we poured this pumpkin. So again, just another great thing that you can do um, with the pouring medium. And again, you can have a whole set for fall and really, you know, transform all your decor um, from your pumpkins to your centerpiece. Again, so many different things you can do. You could do picture frames, um, canvases. So we just have a wood canvas, just pop the back out. Um, I'm gonna grab my tray. I'm going to put my thumbtacks right in the back and this would be beautiful for fall pictures so you could you know really just you know family pictures and change this out in your entryway would be beautiful or if you have a gallery wall you could do just some beautiful fall pours and I love the idea of a picture frame or as a gift um, so this pan's a little bit small but I have my other ones all dirty oh that's all right I'm gonna use this anyway Okay, so I'm just going again. This is using the Mod Podge Ultra. It looks just like the pouring medium if you're not able to get that. So I'm going to pour directly on my frame. Love that color too. So beautiful. I'm going to use more copper. So I'm gonna keep this one like really beautiful warm color palette and not even put the blue on this. And then um, this is the pre-mixed pouring paint that we talked about. So this is a gold. So I'm just gonna give this a shake and show you. And this, you know, you can use it right out of the bottle that you can pour it right on there and really swirl it. So I'm gonna go back and add more of that berry color. Kind of lost it, which is great because you can just keep layering it. You can see how that paint it really starts to move around. So, so Kara, uh -huh. after we're done with the frame, um, maybe we'll have time to pour a pumpkin. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, people are super excited okay, to see so, how we pour into a pumpkin. Yeah, so again, beautiful frame. Love this for fall. Um, to match any of your decor and the gold and the metallic like I don't know if it shows up on camera ever but it's so beautiful in there. Yeah, let me just wash off my hands. I'll definitely pour a pumpkin. I love it. Okay. We're going to color requests. We want to change it up a little bit. I know. What do you guys want to see? <laughs> All right, so I've just got um, these are this one's actually an old project that we can pour right over him. So we got a pumpkin. So these are, you can, you could pour on a real pumpkin if you wanted to, to be honest. Um, but we're just using the fake foam pumpkin. And we don't, again, need to do anything to him um, unless you want like a base coat color. So actually this pumpkin, I believe was painted this light blue. You can see the orange underneath, look at our mess there. Um, but you can paint blue and then just pour on top of it or you can pour directly onto the pumpkin. So no prep, nothing you need to do. Um, I am going to grab, I'm going to mix up some more colors since we have time. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a green. So again, one to one ratio. So I'm using, um, this is just a hunter for green folk art. So you can use multi-surface 
Also, if you're gonna put these outside, you can use a multi-surface or outdoor paint, or again, seal with Mod Podge Outdoor or the Mod Podge Ultra, so it'll protect your project from the elements, which is great. So you can pop these right outside once you seal them. So one-to-one -one ratio. I'm going to mix him. I'm just going to use these bright colors because I think they're going to look really, really pretty on this morning. I love that green. It's so folly. Yeah, look at that. So pretty. Really pretty. Yeah. And we've got a teal here. Got Lindsay above me fixing the camera, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to use some teal paint. And out of paint here. Okay. One to one ratio. And again, a little bit of paint really does go a long way. Like you use a lot of paint by pouring, but you can cover a lot of surface. Uh, I'm going to do this teal, the green, and some copper. I think that'll be pretty on the orange. So pretty. Yeah, I'm totally making a mess here. Okay. Speed crafting. Okay, so wipe off. Again, baby wipes, best friend, especially, but look, the pouring, it just comes right off. The paint, soap and water comes right off. No big deal. I'm going to wipe off my space here. I'm just going to reuse my pan that I used for the wood round to show you guys this pumpkin. So let me get some stuff out of the way here. So I'm going to have a mess. So I just, I'm reusing my pan again, no big deal. I'm going to put my thumbtacks in my pumpkin because remember you want that air to get up underneath and you don't want it to create a seal because it's gonna, it won't dry, it will take forever. So um, typically, you know, let this dry overnight about 24 hours, but you just, you know, you can pop it in front of a fan, um, but I love the thumbtacks because it keeps it off of your surface and lets the air get underneath. So I'm gonna place them down and then I'm just gonna pour on it. I'm gonna start and I am gonna pour. Can you guys see that? I don't know if we're centered. Yeah. Maybe a little bit to your left. Yep. Oh you guys, what a mess I have on the table. <laughs> Crafting's messy. Yeah, all right. It's like the messiest, but fun. So much fun. All right, so we are just gonna start pouring. Kind of looks like slime, but it's really pretty. That, that's really and you can paint. You could pour on the stem, or you know, a lot of times we'll paint the stems with like a treasure gold, um, just when it's all finished. Maybe this teal color, and I love these different colors for fall. It doesn't have to be, you know, you can go traditional, but you can absolutely change it up and kind of personalize it. And also, the paint skins are really great for pumpkins. Um, because you could write out words, you could spell boo, you could put a, you know, like a jack-o'-lantern face on with the paint skins, you could cut out triangles. So I love that look too. So you could have one pumpkin that's poured and then use all that leftover paint skins and do a face and like a mass um, matching little set of pumpkins. That's a really cute idea, Kira. I love that. Um, and so this paint is so thick in the medium, like it still is swirling and, you know, you could turn it but it's not going to completely run off. And as it starts to move, you can just keep adding and layering. So you put some yellow on there. And, I and again, don't worry if you get your stem, you can always go back and paint him. Yeah. I feel like the great part about pouring on a 3D object too is like you can pour on any part of it. You can pour from the top, from the side, whatever naked yeah. stuff. You can add paint to it. Yep. Yeah, so if you wanted, you know, less of like a stripe look, you could. You could just pour. So say you wanted to pour on the side there. And then you really could truly, he's going to get kind of crazy, you could swirl him and really get more of like a tie-dye look. 
I kind of make them crazy on there and make the paint go different ways because you can see that movement that you get. So it doesn't have to be just stripes. You can see how pretty that is. And that's the great part about the folk art pouring medium too, is that no matter how much you mold the colors together, it'll never get muddy. Right, right, absolutely. So yeah. Ooh, he's kind of crazy now. He's actually really pretty if you can see the side. The marbling is really beautiful. It's really pretty. And then you just let him dry, and then you're gonna have all this great paint for paint skins on the bottom. Love it. Yeah, he's kind of crazy. So this guy we did more like traditional, just straight down. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people are super intimidated to paint or to pour on a 3D object, but a great tip is to base coat it first. Yeah, absolutely. So base coat, um, any color, you know, and it's whatever you want to like really show through. So you could base coat it white, black, you can buy pumpkins in all different colors. Um, again, we painted this one like a really pretty teal. Um, and you don't need, oh, do you leave the base coat wet? No. So if you're going to base coat, you want to base coat and let it dry completely and then pour over it. Because your base coat isn't going to have the pouring medium in it. It's just going to be, you know, we would just base coat with folk art or folk art home decor chalk or treasure gold. Let that dry and it's going to dry pretty quick. You can always hit it with a hair dryer. And then you want to pour over with your pouring medium, your pre-mix pouring paint or your Mod Podge Ultra. Yeah, love it. Yeah. So, does anybody have any other questions? I don't think so, Kira. People are really excited. They love seeing you pour the pumpkin. I think people um, I just love having all those tips on how to pour on a 3D object. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. We love pouring. We, I feel like, um, I think Jesse did it last week, but we haven't done it in a, you know, a couple weeks. So um, we'll be back on Friday with, uh, we've got some more fun pumpkin um, crafts to show you. Um, I don't think we're doing pouring. But we've got some more great fall pumpkin ideas. So you want to check out michaels.com community classroom to sign up for that. Um, Jesse will be back on Monday with Let's Paint. So um, thank you, Michaels, for having us again. We couldn't be more honored. Thank you guys all for joining us. And we will see you on Friday. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye.